a technical and vocational education and training is being recognized as a key in addressing unemployment in Africa. In Rwanda, for instance, the government has put in place policies and established partnerships that are helping in the improvement of the sector. This field uh, used to be not uh, uh, given much attention, but since uh, 10 years now, uh, we've seen tremendous uh, improvement and uh, uh, change uh, thanks to different partners, including the German government. They have been helping us in training trainers, in equipping our, our schools, uh, workshops, and uh, even uh, constructing uh, uh, technical and vocational schools. We carry out what we call uh, Tresa surveys and uh, they, show, they, 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 they show that more than 75% of our Tibetan graduates, they get employed after uh, six months. They are already employed or they are employing, they, they, they create their own employment. So uh, the, the vocational training and education has been contributing uh, to the increase of jobs created, particularly through what we call a national employment program, where we, we are leading at the Ministry of Education the pillar uh, of skills development, where we, we train in-service uh, professionals, but also we train uh, young people, young men and women who graduated from general education uh, studies but who did not get employment. So they come, we train them for about four to six months and they go and they get employment. Despite remarkable improvement in technical and vocational education in Africa, there is need for more private sector involvement as well as enhancement of TVT curriculum to ensure students acquire not only technical skills but also entrepreneurship to apply these skills. To have more trainees, uh, we need involvement of uh, local uh, private companies and organizations because sometimes uh, they are reluctant, they are reluctant to cooperate with uh, in this kind of training, but we think this forum, this conference will really contribute a lot to changing that mind uh, to help uh, private company, uh, companies to understand that actually they are the ones who benefit more from this uh, kind of training. The, the government's role is to create the conditions that actually allow for certain development to happen. And so they're doing that by making sure that the policies are favorable towards the things like entrepreneurship, things like you know skills development, and a whole lot of that. And I must say that uh, even in our country, South Africa, we've got great uh, policies that have been set in terms of uh, uh, skills development and TVET. But what is missing is that, what's missing is the, the integration in terms of entrepreneurship into the curriculum. W you will find that the whole curriculum, it's got a whole lot of uh, technical stuff, but it doesn't have much on how do I start a business, how do I create a venture out of this, and how do I make sure it's sustainable and that it can employ. But mostly the curriculum, it's more around how do I get a better job or be absorbed uh, in, in a job. So what the government could do is that it could, I, I strongly believe that the conditions must be set. So meaning that support the entrepreneurs because most of the government don't support the entrepreneurs but they say they want to create jobs. And I always ask myself, how do you create jobs without entrepreneurs? So if you link the TVETs, now you must begin to say, how do we bring in entrepreneurs that can come and be mentors to these people specifically to say those who would want to start businesses when they finish let them be mentored by other entrepreneurs those who don't want to start businesses 
they can go into other workplaces and do apprentice and be paid like they are being paid. So it's a bit of a different, it's a different thing if you want to raise entrepreneurs and you must be intentional. It's not an accident. A lack of access to capital, it's a, it's a big issue that is happening. But I'll tell you what we've been working on uh, in South Africa, which some countries like Kenya, they've probably worked on uh, for over the years, maybe the past 50 years and all that, uh, which is developing an alternate financial system. Now here, we look in terms of communities forming what we call CFI, Corporate Financial Institute. They use the Stockfell model, so when communities come together, they can basically start what you call a cooperative bank and begins to finance uh, the initiatives of their local communities. So for an example, we have a, we're a group of 200 people together that have built up uh, a, 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 a CFI that probably has uh, one point something million. So we are able to say then, here are artisan, here are entrepreneurial opportunity. Let us go invest in, into those projects. So in that way, we give them access to, to capital.